Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. This is where I take a particular trick, a product, or a particular company, or a particular creator, and I do a deep dive into a trick or a series of tricks that they have bought out. And today, I'm going to be doing my second review show special on the legend that is Christian Grace. Now, if you don't know who Christian Grace is, what planet have you been living on? What rock have you been hiding under? Christian Grace is an incredible magician who has set the magic world on fire. His magic monthly membership is literally one of the most popular magic monthly memberships in the, uh, in the world. Uh, thousands and thousands of members uh, and you can go and find out more about it when I did uh, I did a review on it about a year and a half ago and talked about how good it was well since then it's got even better um, Christian has released tricks with Vanishing Ink has released tricks with Illusionist he's released tricks with uh, um, everybody any company that you can possibly imagine Christian's released a trick with and the thing with Christian's magic is it's always excuse me it's always well thought out. It's always very clever from a methodology point of view. Now, Christian is incredible at sleight of hand. No two ways about it. He's incredible at sleight of hand. However, a lot of the magic that he teaches, especially in his men membership group, and a lot of the magic that he, he talks about uh, and, and he, um, he speaks about, is very easy to do. And he focuses on... Uh, like very clever methods as opposed to difficult sleight of hand. And um, I, I'm a big fan of Christian's, been a big fan of his for a long time. I will always be a big fan of Christian's. And so I thought I'd do a review show on Christian because over the last month or two, he's bought out three new tricks, two through Card Shark, <coughs> one through um, uh, Illusionist. He's actually bought out more than that, but the others have been reviewed on the Craig and Ryan review show. So I thought, why not do a review on Christian's uh, uh, latest tricks? I thought that would be a really good thing to do. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do a review show on all of Christian's new tricks. So if you're a Christian Grace fan, buckle up. I think you're going to enjoy this. If you're not a Christian Grace fan, well, buckle up, because I think you're going to enjoy this, because you're going to get to find out about one of the greatest creators of modern time. You think I'm joking? Check this out. So first of all, by Card Shark, we have... Christian Grace's strongest opener, the bet. One of the most popular tricks in Christian Grace's magic monthly teaching platform, the included custom gimmicks eliminate all the difficult slights and switches used in the original version. So the bet was a version, uh, the bet was a trick that Christian originally put on his magic monthly membership, which you can get at a very reasonable price on Gumroad. And, uh, uh, but please go and check it out because it's brilliant. Um, well, what Card Shark have done is they have taken the bet and they've produced it themselves, reshot the tutorial, and made it a lot easier. And if you don't know what the bet is, I'm going to do a performance of it right now. So this is a performance of the bet by Card Shark and Christian Grace. Yeah. It's called the bet. In fact, I'm going to bet you something. I'm going to bet you 10 quid. How's that? You don't need to bet anything back in return. This is all a one-way deal. You could win £10 here. Very exciting. Very that. exciting. There's no way you could lose. So I've got a, uh, a pack of cards, 52 playing cards, yeah? Yeah. Uh, let me explain. Well, first of all, just cut the cards. Uh, cut a packet of cards off. It's up to you how many. Very good. Just mark that for a minute. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you the rules of the bet. The rules of the bet are very, very simple. Rules. You're going to have a look at a card, and you're going to remember that card. Then you're going to cut the cards as many times as you want to, and my job is to try and work out what your card is. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get four chances. If I can't work it out in four chances, then you get ten pounds. Woo! I know it's exciting. Uh, so first of all, just have a look at the card that uh, have a look at that card. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, put it on top. Uh, or actually, cut it into the middle. Just cut the cards anywhere you want to. Cut some cards off. Let's make it really fair. Put the card back. No, put the card back. Put the card. Put no. Put card your back card back, back in the back. There you go. It's my fault. I shouldn't have picked you. Um, put it back and square up. Very good. Now let's cut again. Do you want to cut again? Yeah. Cut, cut the cards again. Anyway. Yeah. Because every single time you give the cards a cut, completely cut. Every single time you give the cards a cut, it completely changes the position of every card in the deck. Cut again, and complete the cut. In fact, I want you to keep cutting and completing the cut until you're happy. And the second you're happy, you're going to tell me you're happy. 
uh, and keep cutting until that point happens. This is very exciting. Honestly, at this point, I, I need to say that the tension has well and truly happy. mounted. Has it? Okay. Let me see if I can do it. Let me get your card. Not helping. I know that's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I said I was going to have four chances, right? Yep. I don't know if I'm right. Don't tell me if I'm right or not. Okay. Please don't tell me if I'm right or not, okay? Just don't tell me if I'm right or not. Keep your shield. Okay. I've got four cards here. And I think one of these is your card. I've either got the, uh, I've got the eight of clubs, I've got a ten of hearts, I've got a king of diamonds, and I've got four of spades. I think one of these cards is your card. Now, um, you'll notice there's one of each suit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, which one is the question? Um, I don't think your card is a club. I don't think your card is a club. I um, I don't think your card is the Ten of Hearts either. It might be the King of Diamonds. It might be a diamond. It might be a spade as well. I don't think it's the spade. Um, well, could it be? It's either the spade or the diamond. I don't. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Okay, I think. Okay, I don't think it's the spade. I don't think it's the heart. I don't think it's the club. I'm pretty sure that your card is a diamond. Was your card a diamond? You want to say? Yeah, was it a diamond? Yeah. Perfect. Yes. So your card was the King of Diamonds? No. What? It wasn't a King. But it was a diamond? It was a diamond. It's not a King. It wasn't the King? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. What was it? The Ace of Diamonds. The Eight of Diamonds? Yeah. Not, not, not the King of Diamonds? Not the King. <laughs> it looks like I've lost a bet. But... You forget I'm a magician, and if I want the Eight of Diamonds, I can get the Eight of Diamonds. Oh. You look really confused about that, because that Eight of Diamonds wasn't there, right? I'm disappointed. I'll get to well, you, you know what's really annoying? Because every good trick has to have a kicker ending. It has to have that moment that you don't see coming. It's not about where the Eight of Diamonds comes from. It's where the other three eights come from as what well. What the fuck? So there you go. That's the performance of the bet. Now, it comes across as very very clean doesn't it? it comes across as very very clean um one of the things that i've noticed about christian's magic is that there's always a kicker ending at the end first of all something impossible happens then once that impossible thing has happened well then you end up with something that's even more impossible that you didn't even see coming and that's what you have here with the bet you have um this whole concept and christian's really good at thinking of hook lines as well and uh, the whole concept of the bet here is is great, um, and 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 the lead into it feels really fair as well. But you know the uh, the, the spectator has a card; they pick the card. You saw the performance. Um, the the first moment of magic is that you're able to work out what the card is, but then the second moment of magic is with no moves, the other three cards match, so you've got a matching four of a kind, which looks impossible. It looks like. There's no way that can happen. And bear in mind, there's no like rough and smooth or science friction or anything like that. It's very clever how this actually works because there is very minimal sleight of hand. The special cards do all the work for you. Now, you get a deck of Phoenix cards with this. And the reason you get Phoenix cards is because you're also going to get some gimmicked cards. And the gimmicked cards match... Uh, the Phoenix deck. So they're printed on Phoenix design cards. So because they're printed on Phoenix design cards, you get a Phoenix deck with this as well. If you don't like using Phoenix cards or you don't use Phoenix cards, you don't really have a choice. 
because the, the, the only way to actually do this is by using the gimmick cards that are included, which are Phoenix back designed. But they do give you a deck to work with as well, which is quite nice. Um, now, it's not a full deck setup, but in order to set this trick up, you are going to have to take certain cards out of this deck. So there's six or seven cards that you need to remove from this deck in order to set this trick up. Uh, that's worth noting um, because obviously it's going to leave you with uh, a few cards shy at the end. Now, there's only actually a six card setup uh, at, the, at the beginning of the routine. There's only a f maybe even less than that, a five card setup. Um, so because of that, this is actually really practical get to get into. If you don't mind using a deck that's a little bit short in terms of the amount of cards there, you could have the cards that you need in the pocket. You could cop them onto the deck and you could get into this at any point in any routine that you wanted to. Or you could do what Christian does, which is just have it set up right from the very beginning. Now, once you finish the routine, the cards are not examinable. That's something worth noting. Um, so the cards aren't examinable, but... Um, it's only the four gimmicked cards. It's only the four uh, eights that are, uh, that are gimmicked. Uh, you put those away and you're left with a regular deck of cards. So you can go from the bet into any other routine because you are left with a regular deck of cards. Um, so the question then becomes, is this trick good enough to warrant the use of gimmick cards? Could you achieve the same thing without gimmicks in as clean a way? And that's a really important question to ask because sometimes in some routines, the answer is no. So I've seen routines before in the past that have been bought out where I've argued on my reviews that you don't actually need um, a, uh, a gimmick. You could literally just do the same thing with a double lift or a triple lift. And I've argued that and I would, I would stand by that appraisal. With this, I really do think that you couldn't get car, you couldn't achieve the same thing that Christian's achieving with sleight of hand in such a clean way. Because when you have that moment where um, you've got the, uh, you know, you've shown the indifferent cards and then you show that you've got the, uh, uh, you know, the eight of diamonds and then they change into the eights as well with no moves, it doesn't look like you've done anything at all. I don't know any sleight of hand where you can literally be that clean. Yeah, you could achieve the same thing with a simple switch, you could achieve the same thing with a, uh, <coughs> you know, a top change or a multiple top change or um, maybe even a secret subtraction at the beginning to put yourself into position. There's a few different ways that you could do it, but it wouldn't be as clean as literally showing those three cards and then just coming down there and kicking them in the teeth and showing them the eights. I don't think that there's a way of achieving this in such a clean way. And that's something that's really worth noting and really worth considering. Um, I like this. I'm not too sure whether it would stay in my repertoire for any length of time. I'm going to try it out. I don't think it's me. I don't think it's the sort of trick that I would do. That doesn't mean it's not good. It's good. And I'm going to give it over 79% because I do plan on doing it. Uh, I think this is really more suited for a social situation, which a lot of the routines that Christian puts into his Magic Monthly are. They're not designed for a gigging magician, although a lot of them will work for gigging magicians. They're really more designed for people who are amateurs and hobbyists and want to do something really cool for their mates. Um, you know, in social situations. That's where a lot of Christian's magic really shines through and he's exceptional at it. Um, I, I don't work in those sort of environments and I, I, I like this, but I don't think I'd do it because I've got a lot of routines where cards change into other cards. And although they're probably not as clean as this, they don't require me to carry a full deck of cards around to do that particular uh, change. So I can use the same deck of cards that I was using to do my ambitious card routine, my card to pocket and all these different routines. I can use that same deck to go into a routine that may not be identical to this, um, but there would be, you know, from the audience. I, 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 I still believe that you're not going to be as clean as this. Uh, I, I just don't think that you are uh, at all in any way, shape or form. 
Um, but I mean, you know, for example, uh, if I had uh, the four aces on the top of the deck, right? So if I took the four aces on top of the deck and I had somebody pick a card and they look at the card and they remember the card and, uh, and the card's lost in the pack, whatever it may be, there we go. And the card's lost in the deck, there you go. And then you say, look, we're gonna, we're gonna take four cards from, uh, from different cards of the deck and you can take that one and we're gonna take that one and we're gonna take that one and we're gonna take that one. So we've got four cards from four different parts of the deck. And you say, I don't want you to tell me what these cards are. I really don't. I don't want you to tell me if, uh, if your card is any one of these four. It might be, it might not, but I don't know. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got the, uh, we've got the 10 of clubs. Uh, we've got the seven of diamonds. Uh, we've got the five of spades, there we go, and we've got the ace of spades, there we go, one, two, three, four cards. Um, uh, you know, and you, you, you kind of go into it, and at the end, you've got this, you've got this three of a kind thing. The problem is, you can't show these cards, that's the problem, you can't show these cards, and I think that's where this whole method falls down. Um, and I think if people want that moment where they see the indifferent cards and then a split second later with no rough and smooth and no flaps and nothing like that, they then see that they've got the, uh, the eights, then this is definitely the trick for them because it's self-working. Um, it's, it's great. It's just that you're really going to have to dedicate a deck towards doing it. And I don't think I want to do that in my work. It doesn't mean it's not great. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give this 85%. I think it's really good. I just don't know whether I personally would do it for any long period of time. But it's beautiful. And the way that Christian has actually got to a point where the cards change into, uh, in, in, into the matching um, four of a kind, especially when people don't see it coming, that's a really beautiful way of achieving that. So yeah, I'm gonna give it 85%. I think it's really good. Uh, the cards, as you would expect from Card Shark, are very, very well made. They will last a lifetime, or however long a pack of cards will last. So yeah, well worth buying. Let's move on with the next trick. Okay, so the next trick we're gonna be looking at is this one right here. This is another one from Card Shark, and this is Christian Grace's Thought of Card to Box. Uh, let's read what it says here. Christian Grace shares one of his favourite plots in all of card magic, card to impossible location. The easy technique used for this effect can be easily applied to other aspects of card magic. Comes with all the gimmicks to match a red Phoenix deck, classic and Phoenix index, as well as a red bicycle deck. Um, and that's a really good point because I wasn't expecting this with Card Shark because they're all about the Phoenix cards. But what they've done is they have given you a little envelope with all the gimmicks that you need, and they have included um, the uh, the cards that you would need there for a uh, red bicycle deck, which is very, very nice of them. Well done, Card Shark. Um, I'm telling you right now, this is one of my favorite Christian Grace tricks. This trick is amazing. I love this. This is way better than the thought of card to pocket that he bought out through Illusionist. The Illusionist one was good. I've reviewed it on the Craig and Ryland review show. You might not have seen that review yet, but me and Ryland have definitely filmed it. And um, we looked at it and we gave it a decent review. It was a good trick, good trick, good trick. But I, I argued it wasn't a great trick. This is a great trick. This is, this is one of Christian's best tricks in my opinion. And he's brought out some stonkers. Um, what's really good about this, really, really good about this, is that you have two gimmicked cards that don't feel like they're gimmicked cards. So you get two gimmick cards that you throw into a deck. So you get two uh, red back gimmick cards that you can throw into a bicycle deck and you're good to go. Those cards can sit in that deck for as long as you want them in there and they will just sit there until you need them to do this trick. At which point you just get them into position and you are good to go. That's what's really nice about this. Two gimmick cards. You can do whatever routines that you want to do with your deck. Those gimmick cards are going to be in the deck, but they're not going to affect anything. But within three seconds, you can be set up to do this routine. Now, that's the first really nice thing about this. Um, the second really nice thing is, is that the construction of the routine is beautiful. I'm going to show you a performance of this, first of all. So let me show you a performance of this 
When I've shown you a performance, I'll talk about why the construction is so good. But let's have a look at a performance of this first performance. So it's a card trick, but yes. it's, it's one of the best card tricks I've ever seen. And you at this point have seen a lot of card tricks, and this one is rather a good one. That is a bold statement. Everyone. It is a very bold <laughs> statement, but I truly believe that this is a very good trick. So uh, I'm going to give the cards a shuffle, give them a mix up, make sure there's no wires, no magnets, no threads, no trapdoors. Uh, they are all there. They are all different. How's that for you? Is that fair? Pretty good. Good stuff. Um, <clears throat> now the idea is very simple. Uh, in a second, I'm going to turn around. Uh, and I'm going to spread the cards out like this. Now, what I want you to do is take a small clump of cards out, uh, just a small clump like that. It's up to you how many. And then what I'm going to be turned around, what I want you to do is silently count them um, so you know the number. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to put them on, on, on top. Do you get the idea? Yep. So you're, gonna, you, you're just going to drop them there. It's completely up to you uh, what number you go for. I'm completely indifferent to the choice you're about to make right now. Um, but you're you're gonna go for that. Can you do that for me? Okay. Okay. Very good. So I'll uh, I'll, I'll turn around. Make sure you count silently so that uh, I don't know your number. If they know your number, that's fine. It's really important that I don't know your number. So I'll spread them out. Take a small clump of cards. Um, count how many you've got silently to yourself. And when you've done that, just drop them on top and square everything up. Can we go? So what we have right now is we have uh, a shuffled deck of cards and there's a number and only you know that number. Would you agree with that? Nobody knows that number other than you. Would you, would you, would you agree? Yep. And that's really important because, well, I mean, the people at home know your number. I think Michael might know your number, but I don't know your number. In fact, I'm probably one of the only people that don't know your number. But that's absolutely fine because that is your target number. Here's what we're going to do now. You're going to take cards... And you're gonna, you're gonna. I, I'm gonna um, look away, but you're gonna take cards in a second, and you're gonna look at each one of the cards as you go through, and you're gonna remember the card that falls at your number. So let's say, for example, your number's uh, five. You'd be look. I want you to look at each card, um, but don't remember any of them. But when you get to uh, the fifth card, uh, that would be your card, and you would remember it. Okay. Do, do, do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Very, very important that you do that. Now, the number you're thinking of is it less than ten? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to go and do this with 10 cards, dropping them into your hand one at a time so that there's exactly 10 cards. And I want you to just remember the card that falls at your number. The reason I want you to do it all the way through to 10 is because if you do it and then stop, I'll know what your number was. But if you go all the way up to 10 and you just keep doing it with each, and you look at each individual card, I couldn't possibly know what your card is or what position it is in the packet. Would you agree? Makes sense. So uh, do that. So you're going to... We'll count them out loud. Go for it. So, face up or face down? You're going to keep everything face down so I can't see anything, but you're going to look at each individual card. So you're going to go one, and then you're going to go two, but you're only going to remember the card that's at your number. Okay. But look at each one, because if you just look at the card that's at your number, I'm going to know what that card is. So I want you to look at each card. You're trying to psych me out here. Do you get the idea, Jack? Yeah. Go. So that's one. That's two. He's keeping a poker face. He's very good at this. That's three. That's four. That's five, that's six, that's seven, that's eight, that's nine, that's ten. Square them up, keep them in your hand. So, could I possibly know anything about your card? I don't see how. Well, I know it's in that packet, and I know it's one of ten cards. But beyond that, I don't know anything. Nope. Correct? There's a rule in magic. You never tell the audience what you're going to do. Because if I tell you what's going to happen, Jack, you're going to be watching very carefully. But I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and make your card vanish and appear inside this card box. The card that you're only thinking of. Oh. Because think about this. You could have thought of any number. I looked away. I couldn't possibly know the number. You then took the cards off the pack yourself. I couldn't possibly know where your card is or the position of where it is. I don't know, but I'm going to make the card vanish from there and appear in here. There's nothing there right now. I want you to see that there's nothing inside that box. Would that be impressive? It'd be very. It'd be good, wouldn't it? Right. Watch. One. Two. I think I'm done. What? I think I'm done. Let me, let me just count through them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. I've got a minute. One card's gone. In your hand, you picked up ten cards, Jack. Now there's only nine. Oh. But you haven't said that card out loud. You haven't told anyone, have you? No. Let's just spread them out. Do you see your card there? No, it's gone. It's gone? It's gone. Your card's gone? It's definitely not there. But you didn't tell anyone that card. No. You didn't tell anyone the number. You didn't tell anyone the card. You didn't write it down. You didn't say anything. You literally just thought of one card. Everything was done in your hand. I couldn't have done anything. I couldn't have used sleight of hand. I showed you that box was empty. Pick it up. Give it a shake. It's not. Sounds like it is to me. It can't be. You still haven't said your card out loud, have you? No. I just want you to freak out when I pull out what the, the three of spades. Fuck. One of the best card tricks I've ever seen. That is one of the best card tricks. I know. Is it my hand? I know. And then it was in the box. So that's a performance of the Thought Off Cards box. And as I said, I absolutely love this. Now, I love the fact that you're telling the audience what you're going to do. You're saying to them, hey, you're going to have that card disappear and go into that box. And you're showing the box empty. There's no ambiguity there. They can see the box is empty. You're putting the box to one side. You don't go anywhere near it. They then randomly think of a number by pulling out some cards and it is a completely free choice and then they take off a bunch of cards and they look at the card at that number and they keep going up to 10 and and then and there's no way you could know what that card is apparently there's apparently no way you could know what that card is and now without touching the cards at all you make that move and you say the card's now in the box you don't believe me watch and now you just deal the cards onto the table and you show that there's now only nine cards or however many you're going to have. You show now there's only nine cards and that one card has gone. You then spread through and you show them that the card's gone and it's not there at all. It's completely vanished. And then they pick up the box themselves. They shake it. They feel that there's one card inside the box. You then take the box and with empty hands, you open it up and their thought of card is in there. Now think about how strong that is, especially when you consider that the deck is examinable. The cards are examinable. Yes, there's a couple of gaff cards in there, but they will never find them in a million years. And as soon as you're finished, the deck is able to be used for anything else and you'll instantly reset because there's not really a setup. All you have to do is just put the deck away and you're ready to go and do it again. Now, there's one element that you need to be aware of, which is that the card comes out the box, is not examinable, but it doesn't need to be because there's no heat on that card. There's no heat on anything. The, the procedure that Christian's gone through is so clean. And when I first started watching the tutorial, I was like, oh, I'm a little bit worried about this. I don't know if this is going to be as clean as it's being made out to be. And then when I was watching the tutorial, I was just thinking to myself, how is he going to do this? This is genius. And, you know, with um, the illusionist version of uh, Thought of Cards Across or Thought of Cards of Pocket that Christian brought out with Garen Clark, they are thinking of a card. They are apparently thinking of a card. They take 10 cards, they spread through them, they think of a card and that card vanishes. Um, but there's problems with that in that the cards can't be examined in any way, shape or form. Whilst with this... They're not spreading through and thinking of a card, but it feels like they're thinking of a card because they're taking any amount of cards. They're counting cards only. They know the secret number. They're looking. I mean, it just feels like they couldn't possibly know. And as soon as they've taken the cards, you don't touch them. And with no moves, that card vanishes. There's so much to love about this trick. I think it's brilliant. This is a great application of a couple of principles and, you know, it's one of those tricks that I wish that I'd come up with. I really wish that I had created this routine. It's fantastic. I'm 100%, absolutely, completely and totally, without a shadow of a doubt, going to be performing this over and over and over again. Because I love this. This is great. Um, it's why I'm giving it 100%. I think this is probably the best trick that Christian's ever done. Um, it's better than level one, which is great. It's better than switch one, which is great. It's better than the bet, which is good. 
Um, it's better than ever. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I've seen. It's even better, in my opinion, than the knowing principle. I love this 100%. I, I know that workers are going to love this. I know that workers are going to do it. But I also know that people who are uh, hobbyists and, and, and just perform socially, they're going to do this as well. This is just a really fun routine. And you know what? It's a magician fooler as well. I think this is the sort of trick that would really fool a magician. Not that you really care about that, or I don't really care about that. But it's nice to have that in your pocket, right? For your next magic convention. So yeah, if you're wanting something really strong, this is really strong. It's called Thought Off Card to Box. It's by Christian Magic, Christian Grace. You can get it from uh, Card Shark, or you can get it from uh, Christian Directly, or all good magic shops. Finally, last trick on the Christian Grace Review Show Special. We have Scribe. This is Scribe. Uh, it's not got the packaging on it. This is Scribe by Christian Grace and Illusionist. And what is Scribe? Well, I think they've been very honest and very open and have told everybody that Scribe is Christian's new age application and new age kind of uh, looking at it from a different direction of the classic thumb writer or thumb tip writer or boom writer. Uh, now, if you don't know what thumb writing is or you don't know what nail writing is, the idea is that you have a piece of lead secretly hidden on your thumb and it would allow you to hold a billet or a business card or a piece of paper and it would immediately allow you to write something secretly on there. So the classic way of doing this, and the first person that I saw really um, take this to the next level was Steve Spill in his mind reading goose routine, where he had the goose actually read the mind of the spectator, which was very, very funny. Um, uh, but, the, you know, for example, you have somebody t say a two digit number and you're holding this here from the very beginning and they say the two digit number and then you turn it around and you show it's matched. Now, um, Christian has approached this in a very, very different way. And he actually talks about this in the history of the, uh, 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 of the product, where at the beginning of the, the tutorial, he talks about the history and he says, hey, I'm coming into mentalism from a magic background. And so I take a different approach to a lot of mentalism style routines. And this is a perfect example. What he's done here uh, is very clever. It's very intelligent. He's taken um, the big problem that a lot of people have with thumb writing or secret writing or nail writing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's taken that, that issue that a lot of people have and he's added something. I'm trying not to give anything away here. He's added something that makes it more reliable and makes it more secure. And on the tutorial, which is great, you will, of course it's great. It's Christian Grace and it's Illusionist. Say what you want about Illusionist, their tutorials generally are really good. And this is no exception. And Christian uh, does a live performance uh, in, in a real world environment and gets incredible reactions. Uh, he performs this guy who seems to question reality after he's seen Christian do a simple two digit number reveal. But then Christian goes through everything with a fine tooth comb. And when I say goes through everything with a fine tooth comb, I mean it. It's not like he's just paying lip service to how to thumb write or uh, nail write. He talks about everything. He talks about the psychology, um, the timing, when it should be done, why it should be done, why it works. He talks about everything and he breaks down the gimmick. He talks about how to customize the gimmick. He talks about how to make the gimmick work for you. Now, I've never been great at thumb writing. Um, I'm okay with the Super Sharpie. <laughs> I'm okay with it and uh, I've used Super Sharpies in the past. But I've always struggled with nail writers and uh, especially boom style writers. So what you get in here is you get the main gimmick uh, and you get a really nice boom writer, which is designed to work with most people's thumbs um, because it will expand depending on the size of your thumb. It works on my thumb and I've got huge thumbs. And then you get extra pieces of lead and extra bits and bobs as well. And you get a bunch of billets as well. So in this box, you also get a bunch of billets. You got everything you need in the box to be able to go out and start performing this straight away. And what's really nice about this is it's very practical from a working point of view. So the gimmick is set on the um, billet from the very beginning. So when you go into your pocket, you immediately get everything in place as you show the billet. So you make your prediction um, or whatever you want to do. You can say you've already got a prediction here, whatever you want to do. And then, it's going to allow you, with a bit of practice, and it will require practice, 
but it's going to allow you with a bit of practice to be able to uh, do clearer uh, thumb writing or nail writing much clearer than you would do if you just use the standard thumb writer or boom writer um, because of the extra gimmick that gives you more security and again I'm trying not to give anything away here so um, it's I've never seen anything like this before it's very clever thinking and it's very good it's very good uh, Illusionist have done a great job in bringing this to market uh, the tutorial is great, the trailer is great, the props are great, the packaging is great. The fact that you get extra billets with it as well is really thoughtful. They really wanted to supply you everything so you can just literally get the box and go immediately and hit the ground running. Uh, it packs small, it plays big, it's going to be perfect for stage performers, close-up performers, walk-around performers. If you've ever wanted to include... Uh, secret writing in your act and Christian goes through a few different ways of using this um, but if you want to ever wanted to do something like this and you've always struggled like I have then this will probably be the perfect solution to your woes uh, it's great it's one of my favorite products that, uh, that uh, Illusionist have released this year I'm gonna give it 95% I think this is really good and I think that uh, this is something that all uh, mentalists and magicians should carry around with them because it's it's great it's really good so well done illusionist well done uh, Christian Grace this is another great product so there you go guys that's another uh, review show special in the bag thank you once again to Christian Grace for uh, bringing out all these wonderful tricks that I can review and uh, I will tell you I'm consider Christian a good friend however I would say the same thing to him as I am to you which is I'm completely 100% unbiased and uh, uh, I'm only giving my opinion and my opinion is that's it. It's my opinion uh, Do me a favor though. Let me know what you think in the comments down below now You want to see more videos like this like the video subscribe to the channel again Leave a comment down below. I'm gonna be back again uh, tomorrow with a bunch more videos So make sure that you stick around um, And also if you haven't already done so please go check out the netrix www.thenetrix.com and then while you're at it go check out Christian's magic monthly on gumroad as well because Christian's magic monthly is incredible anyway i'll be back again soon thank you so much for watching my name's craig from magic tv mm -hmm.